Welcome to Celebration Church Pretoria Online. We are excited to have the opportunity to connect with you through this online platform. Celebration Church Pretoria is part of the family of churches for Celebration Churches International, founded by Senior Pastors Tom and Bonnie Duchel. The lead pastors for our Pretoria branch are Pastors Dixon and Itai Katsitsira. There are various ways that you can stay connected with the church. Connect with us on our various online platforms. Join the church WhatsApp group, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and join us on Zoom for different activities. Let us connect in our corporate prayer and fasting every Wednesday, which culminates in our domain prayer meetings from 6 to 7 p.m. on Zoom. If you are a student at the University of Pretoria, get connected with Ignite, our vibrant campus ministry which aims to bring light to the people all around us. Follow the various Ignite social media platforms and hashtag join the movement. Thank you for standing in faith with us and giving towards the purchase of our new building at 459 30th Avenue in Valeria. We are expectant for what God will do through our ministry in this new season. We are believing the Lord that the mortgage bond for our building will be fully paid within the next 24 months. So we encourage you to continue giving to our building project fund. We also invite you to participate in our Compassion's Ministry Pantry Drive, where we will be collecting non-perishable food items to give to those who are in need. If you wish to donate food items, please drop off the goods at our church office in Valeria. Alternatively, you may transfer money into the church bank account with the reference Pantry Drive, and these funds will be allocated accordingly. We also encourage you to continue giving your tithes and offerings through electronic funds transfers. For more information and details regarding what has been mentioned, please do not hesitate to send us a message in our inbox. We invite you to join us now as we praise and worship together. Hallelujah! This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, let's put our hands together. My heart is open wide, oh Lord, come fill it right on. Your water is all I need, please come, pour it into my cup. Bring the soul to life. Set 
They say this mountain can't be moved They say these chains will never break But they don't know you like we do There is power in your name We've heard that there is no way What you can do There is power 
would now like to invite you to join us for the word of the day. Welcome to Celebration Church Pretoria Online. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And we are so excited about the month of uh, July, the month where the Lord uh, is going to show himself strong. You know, we've had so many testimonies. This is our month for God's wonders to manifest in our, in our, in, in, in our presence. So we thank God for some of the things that he has already begun to show himself strong on our behalf. You know, last week we were talking about the God of the multitudes. So let me just quickly recap. You know, what we did, the, our objective was to check, to see from the word of God, what does the word of God say about the multitudes? And also we went to talk about what is the purpose of the multitudes. So the multitudes are there to, they come, you know, to ask for us to guide them, to make right decisions, to populate heaven, to honor God, to worship the Lord, and to make them feel and dominate the, the earth. And we also went on to talk about what is the way to the multitudes. And I shared a few things where I said you need to avoid the ownership mentality. You need to love and value people. You need to engage the, 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 the enemy at the place of prayer. You need to build a on the quality instruction of the word and you need to maintain divine presence maintain an atmosphere of praise and worship and we need to touch lives in practical ways we need to train and deploy the sense to do the work of the ministry and we need to be sensitive to the holy spirit so this morning i'm going to continue in our same theme of, of the god of uh, of wonders and the title of my message this morning is supernatural financial increase let me start by a word of prayer father god we thank you this morning that lord you are a faithful god thank you for another opportunity for us to come into your presence another opportunity for us to experience your wonders so father we thank you for the word as the word goes forth we thank you for 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 open hearts we thank you that may this word bear fruit that remains in our lives in the mighty name of jesus we pray amen so supernatural financial increase we can't talk of the wonders of god without seeing some drastic financial breakthroughs so as a way of introduction as i start my message i want you to note four things so first of all god is the owner of heaven and earth the bible says in the book of psalms 50 verse 12 it says if i were hungry i would not tell you for the world is mine in all its fullness. The Bible also says in the book of Psalms 24 verse 1, says the Lord, the earth is the Lord's in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. So even people, all resources, they belong to God. So we need to know that this is a, not a big thing for God because he owns everything. The second thing I want you to note is the silver and gold that is on the earth, it belongs to the Lord. Yes, you heard me right. The silver and the gold. You know, the Bible says in the book of Haggai, chapter number 2, verse 8, it says, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord, the Lord of hosts. And the third thing I want you to note is God is passionate about the welfare and the prosperity of his children. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 35, verse 27, it says, let us shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. Let them um, say continually, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So it gives pleasure to the Lord when you prosper. It gives pleasure to the Lord when you begin to tap into financial increase. So may scarcity and shortage never know your address in this season in the name of Jesus. That's why 3 John 1 verse 2 says beloved i pray that you may prosper in all things be in health just as your soul prospers you know in the bible there's a man called lazarus you know there's something you learn about this man and may god forbid that we as children of god we need to learn and we need to trust god for prosperity you know may god forbid for us to remain poor that you know when lazarus when he died heaven had to intervene they to come and take him to bury him i'm sure there was no one to bury him 
you know, in the in the in the in the on the earth. And Lazarus was so poor that you know the Bible even says he had to squat in Abraham's bosom. I mean, let me show you from the word of God. The Bible says in the book of Luke 16, verse 22. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. And the, the, the rich man also died and was buried. So this guy was not buried. The angels had to take him. So being and being in torments in the heads, he lifted up his eyes and he saw afar Lazarus in his bosom. So Lazarus actually had to go to, 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 to Abraham's bosom. I'm sure it's because of this, this poverty that he had. The fourth thing I want you to note is the move of God is always accompanied by a flow of resources. When the wonders of God that we're experiencing in this month, you will see there will be a flow of resources when the wealth of the wicked is transferred to the, to the, to the, to, to, to the righteous. So God's manifestation attracts the provisions of God. Remember in the, in the Old Testament, the children of Israel, as they were leaving um, uh, Egypt, you know, they got there to pay the arrears that they accrued over the 430 years of, um, of captivity. You know, if you go to the book of Exodus chapter number 3, verse 12, and he said, I will certainly be with you. This is uh, Moses, you know, God was talking to Moses. And it shall be a sign to you that I have sent you when I have brought the people out of Egypt. And you shall, you shall serve the Lord in this mountain. Then Moses said to the Lord, Indeed, when I come, um, when I come, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, the God of your father has sent me to you. Say to them, what is um, what is his name? What shall I say to them? So God was talking with with Moses. Then God began to talk to him uh, as he was as they were conversing. You know, if you go to verse twenty, God says, "So I will stretch my hands and strike Egypt with my wonders, and which I will do in its uh, midst. And after that, I will let you go." And I, I like what verse 21 says, and I'll give you this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall be that when you go, that you shall not go empty-handed. So when you continue with, um, with this, uh, th this, this story, if you go to Exodus chapter number 11, verse 2, he says, now speak now in the hearing of the people. Let every man ask from his neighbor every woman from his neighbor, articles of silver and articles of gold. For, and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man um, Moses was very great in Egypt and in the sight of um, Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. So imagine, God speaks to the people and says, imagine during these days, sometimes when you are reading the Bible, you need to be very practical about it. Then God said, Everyone goes. So I'm sure there are people who said, ah, I'm not going to ask my neighbor. Huh? What would they say? But these guys, they obeyed. They actually went and, 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 and did according to that. Because the Bible actually said in, book, in the book of Exodus, chapter number 12, verse 35. It says, now the children of Israel had done according to the word of God. And they asked the Egyptian um, articles of silver and articles of gold and clothing. And the Lord had given people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. So they, so they granted them as they requested and they plundered the Egyptians. May I declare and decree to someone that as the Lord is moving in this month, as the Lord is moving in this season, there is a transfer of wealth of the wicked to the righteous. There is a transfer of wealth that activates abundance, that activates restoration in our lives. You know, the Bible actually says in the book of Joel, chapter number 2, verse 23, it says, Now then, you children of Israel, rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain faithfully. He will cause you, you will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the later rain in the first month. And the threshing floor shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten, the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, the chewing locusts, and my army, which is um, which I have sent among us to you, you shall eat plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you and you shall never be put to shame. You know, when the supernatural is activated, there is restoration 
in the years that have been stolen, in the things that the enemy has stolen from you. And there is a, even the reproach is lifted from your life. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. So, what is the purpose of financial increase? Is it just for you to have bling? Is it just for you to be able to enjoy life, buy cars? What is it for? There is a purpose for that. So today, I'm just going to give you three purposes why we're trusting God for supernatural financial increase. The first is because of the spread of the kingdom mission. We've got the year at Celebration Church Pretoria. We are stewards of the vision of building people, building dreams, and building the kingdom. You know, the Bible says in the book of Zechariah chapter 1, verse 17a, it says, again, proclaim, that says the Lord of hosts, my cities shall spread out. How do they spread out? Through prosperity. As we prosper, the work of God is established. As we prosper, we're able to impact and touch more people. As you prosper, we're able to have influence in different areas. We're able to touch more lives, even with our compassion ministry, even with the things that we need to do. You know, I'm, I'm reminded that, um, you know, the gospel is expensive, especially if you want to do it well. You know, I love the late Billy Graham, the evangelist. You know, I was reading an article that at one time uh, they went to, to, to do a, 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 a crusade in, in London. So the crusade, which was supposed to take about three, four days, what happened is uh, in, in, in the Wembley uh, Stadium, that, that crusade took 88 days. Every day that even the, <laughs> they could not fit people in Wembley Stadium. That, you know, Wembley Stadium has almost became the, the overflow because they couldn't, uh, they couldn't fit people there. So I was just asking that, do you know how much expensive a crusade is? But this guy's a crusade which was supposed to be a week. It took 88 days. So imagine, if you don't have money to do that, how are you able to touch people? These guys, they had the money, they had the resources because the, for us to prosper is for us to be able to advance the work of God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The second reason why the purpose of, 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 of financial increase is for the building of kingdom structures, building of churches. You know, you know, I'm reminded in the Bible, in the book of Exodus, chapter number 25, when God wanted to build a tabernacle, then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering, and for everyone who gives it willingly with his heart, you shall take my offering. And if you jump to verse 8, it, it says, Let them of the same chapter let them make me a sanctuary that i may dwell with them and according to to all that i show you and the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of the furnishings you know if you jump to 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 exodus chapter number 35 you know they made that call for them to build the tabernacle then the people you know the the, the finance people they spoke to moses say the people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the lord has commanded so Moses gave a commandment and, 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 and caused it to be proclaimed through the camp to say, let neither man nor woman do more work for the offering in the sanctuary. And the people were restrained from, build, from bringing for the material that, um, that, that had, they had was sufficient to do the work. Indeed, it was too much. You know, as a man of God, I'm waiting for it. They say, guys, we made a call. Enough. Enough, guys. I mean, Moses said, guys, we're not going to take any more of your gold. We're not going to take any more of your money because we've got enough. A day is coming. But this only happens when we tap into financial increase that there's always enough. There's always enough to do the work of God. There's always enough. You'll be looking for opportunities. You'll be looking for opportunities to say, how can I be able to advance the work of God? Some of you, there's someone listening to the sound of my voice. God is about to transfer the wealth of the wicked to you. That as you know, you know what to do with the money. There are churches to be built. There are churches to be built. Even here in, Celeb in Pretoria, we've got churches. We need a church in Pretoria North. We need a church in Pretoria East. We need a church in the, in, in, in the central, there with the students. But these things, they require money. And it's when we enter that season that we've got enough money to advance the kingdom project. You know, in the, in the book of Luke chapter number 7, you know, there's a story 
of a centurion um, uh, man there. The, you know, the Bible says in, in, in verse, uh, verse 2, a certain man, a centurion, um, a certain centurion servant who was dear to him was sick and ready to die. So when he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, pleading him to come and heal his servant. And when they told Jesus that they earnestly begged him earnestly, saying that he's, he's one who, whom, um, whom you should do this deserving, uh, this was deserving, for he loves our nation and actually he has built a synagogue. Imagine one man built a whole church. There's some of you, you've got the capacity. You'll be asking, say, Pastor, where do you want us to build a church? We've got the funds, we've got everything. The God is raising up end time financial uh, people that will fund the gospel, that will be looking for opportunities to plant churches, to plant churches, to build churches. And this is why we need to prosper in the name of Jesus. The third reason why the purpose of our prosperity is for the dignity of the church. This will enable the children of God to serve him without distraction. You know, in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter number 9, verse 15, it says, Now there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city, yet no one remembered him because he was poor. Then he said, Wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor, the wisdom of a poor man is despised and is not heard. So no matter how anointed you are, how anointed we are, if we remain poor, the wisdom of a poor man is despised. So we need to prosper, to bring dignity to the church, to bring dignity to the children of God, that we are able to serve God without any hindrances. So as I touch down, I'm going to give you seven ways that we can access financial increase, supernatural financial increase in this season. The first, the first way or that you, you need to do, you need to have a heart of affection for God. Have a heart of affection for God. The Bible says you need to embrace a God-first heart. The Bible says in Matthew chapter number 6, verse 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. And um, also the Bible, you know, this was uh, David who, when he was talking in the book of First Chronicles chapter number 29, verse 3, he says, moreover, because I have set my affection on the house of my God, I have given to, to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house, my own special uh, treasure of gold and silver. So as you seek God first, this God first, as you are affectionate about God, it will help you that, you know, when we, we give God our time, our talents, and our treasure, as we prioritize God in everything that we do, it actually activates the supernatural to be to be to be in a, a, a activated in our lives. Then, if you love God more than you love money, you will never lack money. When your heart is with God, even the gold will look for you. But if you put money ahead of God, it becomes materialism. So we need to have affection. A heart of affection for God. The second reason or way that we connect to supernatural increase, you need to look away from everything and everyone but to God. This includes you depending on yourself, your capabilities, your connections, that you know you don't have um, uh, anything but your source is God. Remember the story of Abraham when he met Melchizedek in the book of Genesis chapter number 14 when um, he met Melchizedek and Melchizedek said, listen, give me, give me your, 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 your pieces and, the goods and, 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 and take the goods for yourself. And this is what Abraham said. You know, if you go to verse 20, and the Bible says, and blessed be God most high who delivered your enemies into your hands, who gave, and he gave a tithe of all. Now the king of Sodom said to Abraham, give me the persons and take the goods for yourself. But Abraham, listen to what he said to the king of Sodom. I have raised my hands to the Lord God most high, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take nothing from a thread to a sandal strip, 
and that I will not take anything that is yours. Why? Least you say that I made Abraham rich. So he said, I choose not to look to you. I choose not to look to anyone. But I choose to look only to the Almighty God. You know, the book of Jeremiah puts it very clearly. Jeremiah chapter number 17, verse 5. It says, that says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in men and makes flesh his strength, whose heart depends, departs from the Lord, for he is like a tree, like a shrub in the desert, and shall not see when it comes, a good comes, but shall inhibit the perched places in the wilderness, in a salt land which is not inhabited. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He shall be like a tree planted by the water which spreads its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes. But its leaf will be green and will not be anxious throughout the drought, nor will he cease from, from yielding fruit. So when you trust in the Lord, when you choose to look not to anyone or anything, but to God, God will help you. If it is God's project, there is a God budget. If you, you need to, 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 to always trust in Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides for all our needs. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. The fifth way that we, we can connect to supernatural increase is when we maintain open heavens by the tithe. The Bible says to us in Malachi 3 verse 10, it says, bring all your tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me on this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven to pour out such a blessing that there will be no room enough for you to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sex that you will not destroy the fruit in your ground and you shall, you shall, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit in the, in, in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall you will be delightful, a delightful land, says the Lord. Says the Lord. So tithe opens the heavens, but giving provides the seed which God will multiply and bring multiplication in your life. The fourth way that we connect, we connect to 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 this uh, gener uh, to, to, to supernatural increase is be generous in giving. Be generous. There are always different opportunities for us to give. You know, in our church, we've got opportunities with our building fund. We've got opportunities with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with our CCP online, our TV ministry, where we need to touch more people. And we've got opportunities for you with the compassion ministry where you can be able to to give to the to, to the work of God. It will put opportunities for us to upgrade our, our equipment, upgrade our sound multimedia equipment. You know, the Bible actually says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse 6, but I say, he who sows sparingly, who also reaps sparingly. He who sows bountifully, who also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound to you, that you have all sufficiency in all things, that you may have abundance in every good work. You know, you need to be generous. There are so many opportunities. If you look around your friends, your families, there are always opportunities for you to give. As you give, this activates this grace of self-sufficiency that you have more than enough. You know, the Bible puts it like this. It says in the book of uh, Proverbs, chapter number, number, num number 11, verse 24, it says, The one who scatters yet increases more. There's one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters others will himself be watered. That's what the Bible in the book of Luke chapter number 6 verse 38. It says, give and it will be given back to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. So as you do that, as you give, as you are looking for different opportunities to be giving, it activates supernatural increase. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. 
the, 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 the fifth um, way that we connect to supernatural increase is always be appreciative. Always be appreciative. You know, the Bible says in the book of Psalm 67, verse 5, it says, let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Then you shall, the earth shall yield a increase. God, your own, shall bless us. God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. So as we praise the Lord, as we are always being appreciative of what he does, this actually results in increase coming upon your life. That's why 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, verse 16 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God to you in Christ Jesus. So until you are grateful for the last, you are not qualified for the next. Thanksgiving is a, certif is a certificate of qualification for the next blessing that you desire. Until an individual offers gratitude to God, that individual does not qualify for what God has next. So memorying is the killer of a seed. Complaining is the killer of supply. So Thanksgiving is when you register the fact in heaven that you have received what God has released. So until you receive what God has released and re register acknowledgement in heaven, it means you are not qualified for what God is for you. That's why one of our church values is we've got an attitude of gratitude. You need to thank God for what you have. As you do that, it qualifies you for the next allocation from heaven. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. The fifth way that we connect to supernatural increase is you need to avoid a wasteful lifestyle. Avoid a wasteful lifestyle. You know, there's the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus taught us there there was a multiplication of, you know, those uh, five, uh, five loaves and two fish. You know, if you go to, to, to John chapter number 6, verse 11, the Bible says, And Jesus took the loaves and, uh, when he had given thanks and distributed them to the disciples. And the disciples, those who were sitting down, and likewise um, of, of the fish as, as much as they wanted. And when they were filled, he said to the disciples, here's the principle now, gather up the fragments that remain, so that nothing is lost. So they gathered uh, them up and there were 12 baskets with fragments of, of five barley loaves which were left over by those who had eaten. So you need to avoid prodigal spending. You need to avoid shortages. Some of you, when God gives you increase, you just squander the money. That is, when you, when you are wasteful, that actually blocks, it means you are not a good steward. God knows he cannot trust you. With, um, with, 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 with blessings. You know, I'm reminded of the story of the, of the, of the um, prodigal son. When the prodigal son, uh, in Luke chapter 15, you know, he went, you know, the Bible says, and a, a certain man had two sons, and the younger one said to them, Father, give me the portion of the goods that falls to me. So he divided to them in his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and journeyed to a, to a far country and he wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Some of you, can God entrust you with a million US dollars? Can God can trust you with 10 million rands? Or some of you, you know, they say money amplifies who you are. That money can, can God entrust you that, you know, some of the money, the reason why you, you are not doing some of the things you are not doing is because you can't afford them. But if you have got the resources, are you a good steward or you are that person who is wasteful? So one of the things that if, if, if God can trust you, if God can say, if I give this person a million US dollars, this person is able to, 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 to be a good steward of those money. So you need to avoid prodigal living in the name of Jesus. So the last point or way that we connect to, to, to supernatural financial increase is you need to embark only on divinely commanded projects. If God has not commanded it, God is not going to commit to whatever you start. You know, that's why the Bible says in the book of uh, Psalms 127 verse 1, 
He says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain for you to rise up early and sit up late to eat the bread of sorrows. For God gives his beloved sleep. So unless God is involved in this thing, unless God is involved in this thing, this thing will not prosper. You know, I'm reminded of um, the story when um, Zerubbabel was asked by the Lord to, to build the, the, to rebuild the, the sanctuary. You know, that was broken. Uh, you know, this, the, the, the sanctuary that um, Solomon had built. So Zerubbabel, when he started doing that, you know, if you read Haggai in, in the book of Zechariah, you see that there were the resources were, were actually limited. That at that time, Zerubbabel was actually tired. He thought, you know, I can't do it. The project had actually stopped because of lack of finances. Then the, the, the Spirit of the Lord, through the prophet uh, Zechariah, you know, came and this is what they said to Zerubbabel. So if you go to Zechariah chapter number 4, verse 6, it says, So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. It's not by might nor by power. But it is by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and you shall bring forth the capstones with shout of grace, grace to it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came, came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of the temple. His hands will also finish it. Then you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. So when you embark on God projects, the projects that have been commissioned by the Lord, that will activate the supernatural increase. Then when Zerubbabel knew that God is good, is part of this, he said, I'll build my own church. Before they know it, this church, the glory of the former church was, 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 was greater than the, 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 the later church was, was greater than the former church. You know, I told you I love Billy Graham. You know, he's one of my, my mentors, the late Billy Graham. You know, at one time, Billy Graham, they were investors. I, I was reading some of, um, you know, some of the, one of his books. And what was happening is investors came and said, listen, we want you to build a Billy Graham University. You know, just like what Oral Roberts has done. So there were people who said, we're there to give you money. We're there to do this thing. And this is what Billy Graham said. He said, listen, the Lord has not spoken to me about building a university. You know, all our Roberts he heard from the Lord, God bless him. But for me, God has not spoken to this. But people said, listen, we have got the money, let's have a break. I said, no, 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 God has not spoken to me about a university. And I said, wow. And for some of us, how many things do you embark because you just see someone else doing it and you say, this is nice. Or you see a business, someone doing it and you say, they are making money, I can do it too. But if you want real supernatural increase, you need to embark on divinely commanded projects. Just like Billy Graham said, me, I'm an evangelist. I'll go there. That's why when you went to Wembley, the, the, the other story I was sharing with you, 88 days, they had enough, more than enough for them to do crusades for days and they would actually be able to fully fund those things. Let me just recap. I said there are things that we need to note about supernatural financial increase. And we said as a way of introduction that the God is the owner of heaven and earth. And the silver and the gold belong to the Lord. And God is passionate about the welfare and prosperity of his, uh, of, of, of his children. And the move of God is always accompanied by supernatural increase. And I went on to say that what is the purpose of supernatural financial increase? It is the, for the spread for the spread of the kingdom mission and for the king for the building of kingdom structures and also for the dignity of the church and i also went on to say how do you access supernatural financial increase and i said have enough a, a heart of affection for god look away from everything and anyone everyone but god maintain open heavens by the tithe be generous in giving always be appreciative and avoid a, a wasteful lifestyle and embark only on godly uh, divine commanded projects. 
You know, as we are touching down, you know, there are four opportunities that we have in this church. You know, the first opportunity is through our building fund. You know, the building fund enables us to pay off our mortgage bond and also to maintain. You know, our man of God said it's very easy to obtain, but hard to maintain. So we need to maintain a standard of excellence and continue to make sure that we do what God wants us to do. The second opportunity is through the sound and musical equipment drive. We need to replace and upgrade our equipment and have cutting edge equipment so that when people come to the house of the Lord, they've got a, an experience. The third way that you, you can partner with us is through CCP online, you know, to make sure that, you know, we, 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 we've got more funds to, to be on radio, for us to be on how uh, TV, and to be able to have got different platforms. It costs money, you know, to, 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 to buy the truth. And the third way is through the Compassion Ministry. We've got ongoing projects for the Compassion Drive. We've got the Soup Kitchen. So there are different ways that you, you, you can partner with us. So even today, there are different um, account details that are showing you on the screen. If you are, you've got something specific that you need to, to partner with us, talk to us. You are looking for opportunities. We'll tell you where to channel your monies, depending on what, the things that um, the Lord has, um, is, 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 is put on you. So this is, let me just pray as we just take the offering before I close the service. Father God, we thank you that you are the one who gives seed to the soul. You're the one who helps us. You're the one who stays in our hearts. You're the one who gives us the intent and the purposing of us to give. So Father, for the hands that have given, there are different opportunities we have, four opportunities that we have in this church, begin to steer in people's hearts that Lord, may you continue to speak to them in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You know, before we close our service, you know, the Bible says, Jesus became poor on our behalf so that we, we can be rich. When Jesus died for you and I, it's not just for your salvation, but it's for you. You know, he says that the, in John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and life in abundance. So one of the things that Jesus did for you is for you to connect to this supernatural financial increase. You need to receive him as your personal savior. So today, maybe you are there today and you have never given your life to Jesus. I want to give you an opportunity this morning that you need to say yes to him. You know, there's a second group of people, you know him, but because of the pressures, because of what you have been going through, you are not where you are supposed to be. So those two groups, I want to pray with you before we close. I want you to stand up to your feet as a way of reverence. I want you to put your left hand on your heart and lift up your right hand. Just repeat this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are the Lord of my life. This morning, I receive you as my personal savior. Even today, I ask you to wash me with your blood. Cleanse me with your blood. So we thank you that your blood washes my sins clean. Your blood blots away all legal claims that the enemy has upon my life. So today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, seal this confession. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me just pray for you. Father God, we thank you for the people who have said yes to you this morning. We thank you for your blood. We thank you for laying down your life for us so that we can be reconciled to God. So Father, we thank you that even as we go our separate ways, we know that, Lord, you are God who can connect us to supernatural financial increase. For Father, we know the purpose for it and we know how we can connect with it. So we thank you for this word. We receive it in the name of Jesus. And may this word bear fruit that remains in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So thank you so much for joining us today. You know, this is our month for us to experience the wonders of God. One of the wonders of God, when there's a move of God, there's also a transfer of wealth of the wicked to the righteous. Some of you get ready for a switch, for a flow, for the favor of the Lord. Just like the children of Israel, as they were obedient to do what Moses had told them to do, they found favor. Even some of you, as you put those, those, those quotations, even as you put those proposals, may you find favor this week. 
that the Lord will open doors that only God can open. Otherwise, have a week that is productive, that is profitable, and may the Lord show himself strong for you on your behalf this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you have been blessed by this message. Remember to share this message with others and meditate on the word during the week. We look forward to connecting with you again this week in our cell and prayer meetings. Join us again next week for our next Sunday service. Have a blessed week.